Sometimes you load up Call of Duty and all you want to do is blast endless waves of the undead with the best weapons in the game. So that's exactly what I did. I went through every Treyarch zombie game starting at World at War and ending with Cold War. Uh, sorry, not sorry Vanguard, but uh, no. <laughs> and I was only allowed to use Wonder Weapons. Kinda. Now, my name's not Houdini, I can't just pull any old wonder weapon out my ass whenever I feel like it, so there's a few discrepancies here. Other guns are allowed, but they are only allowed whilst I do not have a wonder weapon, like at all, and if I happen to still have a regular gun when I do get a wonder weapon, and I run out of ammo with said wonder weapon, then I'm also allowed to use the other gun. Every other time, it's Wonder Weapon only. I did also set the rule that if I reach round 10 without acquiring a Wonder Weapon, then I had to restart. But thankfully, I never actually had to enforce that rule. I was also a bit more lenient with that particular rule on games such as Black Ops 4 and Cold War, where the Wonder Weapons are craftable or obtainable via a side quest, where those respective steps may take longer than 10 rounds to complete. So with all that out of the way, Let's get to it. Starting off, we have Doris on World at War Zombies. There's only two Wonder Weapons available on this game, and they are the Raygun and the Wonder Waffle. For the first few rounds, I gathered together as many points as I could, as I knew I'd be needing them. Beginning of round four, and I'm at the box, and I come so close to getting the Wonder Waffle first try, but of course the box is just being a bully, and instead I get the Carbine. After a few more spins, I actually end up with an incredible loadout of the PPSH and the MG42. Even though both of these guns are great, they aren't really what I was needing. Round 8, I've still not got a wonder weapon and we are getting ever so closer to that round 10 cutoff. As things were starting to get a little bit dicey, I decided that now was probably a good time to go and get Jug, uh, which almost killed me. <laughs> but we survived just. End of round 8, I'm spinning the box and praying for something at this point, and with my very last spin of the round, the game finally listens and out pops the ray gun. Run saved and we can finally start blasting everything. A few rounds go by and things aren't as easy going as I'd have hoped. I've got two of the teleporters already linked, but I've not yet got the punch to open up the last door and then to pack a punch the ray gun. As it's round 11 and we only have sprinters, standing still and spraying and praying uh, definitely isn't the answer, so that means training, which I am awful at on this game. With the fact that World of War is naturally a difficult game and also factoring in the chaotic way I play zombies, uh, the next half an hour of my life was not Nothing but a pure anxiety filled high. It was horrible. <laughs> Because the ray gun only gives you about 50 points per kill on this game, grinding out the six and a bit thousand points was a ball ache. Also, it didn't help the fact I kept spinning the box in the hopes of pulling the Wonder Waffle, uh, but oh well. Eventually, on round 15, I gather the points I need and I get the final door open and link the teleporter. Now I have access to the Packer Punch. Ray gun goes in and I get the Porter's X2 ray gun back, and now I can finally relax just a little bit. I'd gotten pretty used to my training pack. Pattern, but as I now had the final teleporter room open, I had to change things up a little bit, which screwed everything up. Having more zombie spawns to deal with uh, was honestly a headache, and just as I thought I got a hold of the new train, I went down and it was game over. Round 18 for me on World at War isn't the worst, uh, but now it was time for Black Ops 1. Black Ops 1 is where we begin to see maps have specific wonder weapons unique to that map. The scavenger on Call of the Dead, the baby gun on Shangri-La, and the guns I'd be chasing after, the zap guns on Moon. That is right, I chose to do this one on Moon. Uh, this won't end horribly at all. I'm not gonna lie, uh, me and Moon, we don't get along, like, at all. In fact, I don't like this map. I, I really don't, and I'm not afraid to say that. It's a pain in the ass to play, and I hate it. But the zap guns are incredible, and they're the only reason I'm here today. We start off in Area 51, and we have Jug with us, so that is immediately my priority before we leave. I rush to as many zombies as I can whilst they're slow and killable with one knife to get as many points as possible. The siren plays, and the sprinters are here, and I have just under 2,000 points, which means it's time to start blasting. 2,500 points later, it was time to buy Jug. I grab the pack and this dog comes so close to killing me just before we leave, but I survive by a thread. My one goal now was find the box, uh, which is actually much harder said than done because Moon is huge and 99% of the time you actually can't see the beam of light in the sky space. Sky space? 
Uh, yeah, that makes sense. So I did what anyone would do in this situation. I bought the M14 and I began to panic. But after a full five rounds of panicking and frantically running around, I finally found the box chilling in the dome, where I then almost died 30 seconds later because I'm a dumbass who has to grab the shiny thing every single time. I finally managed to scrounge together some points and spin the box a few times where I get nothing. Not even a sniff of either wonder weapon available. A few more rounds go by, it's round 8 to be specific, and it's looking bleak once again. But then our saviour comes to the rescue and out pops the Raygon, saving us once again on round 8. Raygon in hand, it was time to start grinding out more points because I didn't just want one wonder weapon this time, I wanted both. Round 11, I've got a good amount of cheddar, but it's not needed as we got ourselves a fire cell. Now it was the end of the round and I was being chased by a zombie, which meant I was doing quite a bit of running during this fire cell and then the zombie gods blessed me with the zap gun and I ran straight to it over one of the jump pads and it sent me flying. At this point, I'm losing it, both my mental and the zap gun, but I run back as quickly as I can and at the very last second, I managed to grab them. Pain averted and I now have a pretty stacked loadout. The very next round, I set off to get both my guns pack-a-bunched, considering the nice amount of cheddar sitting in my back pocket. With both the guns pack-a-punched and speed also bought, I now felt unstoppable. Once I returned to Moon, stamina was added to my perks. PhD was a close second, but honestly, the splash damage from the ray gun wasn't really an issue, and I like running away from my own problems, so stamina up it was. For the next few rounds, it was just a game of surviving. Uh, that was until the excavator started being a pain in the ass, and I had to start running all over the damn place just to keep my training spot. But the real problems didn't begin until round 20, where I began to run low on all of my ammo. By the end of round 22, I was completely out of Raygun ammo and normal Zap Gun ammo, leaving me with just a singular version of the Zap Gun, which doesn't give you drops. Or if it does, uh, they're nigh on impossible to get as I wasn't getting any. Slowly, I whittled away at my gun's ammo and around 23, it was all over. I was completely out of ammo and no sign of a maxi and I go down and it's game over. We did beat our World at War round score, but if I had gone some ammo, I know I could have walked into an easy mid 30 to low 40 round. Black Ops 2 is up next and I was debating whether I wanted to do this on Mob of the Dead or Origins. And I ultimately chose Origins. Yes, the Blundergat is my favourite wonder weapon of all time, but the staffs are just so good and it's very difficult to pass them up. This run started off as any Origins run does, by getting the first gen turned on and then getting as many points together in the early rounds as possible. Round 3, I'm at gen 2 and I decided to pick up the MP40 for a bit of added safety. Shortly later, both Gen 2 and 3 are active, and the box is finally on, and there are two extra wonder weapons available inside, being both ray guns, of which I wanted the Mark II, but I got the hammer. Uh, I mean, no complaints from me, but Mark II would have been nice, you know? Round 7, and I finally have the last generator turned on, which also rewards me with my first fire staff part. Round 8 is up next, and so is the Panzer. I've got a nice setup going for me, but he still managed to scare the shit out of me. Uh, but with a lot of blasting later, he goes down and we get another fire staff piece. We shoot down the plane and grab the part, and now all I need is the firestone. Quick trip to the crazy place, and we're all done. And we get our fire staff built by the end of round eight, and now it's time to get it upgraded. I head back to the crazy place and begin filling up the furnaces. Uh, I won't lie, the fire staff is the only staff that I fully know how to acquire and upgrade, which is why it's first. Once that step is done, I head back to the mainland where I spin the box and I get the Raygun Mark 1, uh, which I then trade in for a 5.7 as I still want the Mark 2. We've already used that gun twice, you know, it's time to spice it up a bit. With the furnace step done, it was time to go over to the church and shoot some torches. Which, I won't lie, I did screw up once because I completely forgot that 4 was the bloodstained torch. Uh, so yeah, with those steps now done, all I had to do was align the red dots back in the excavation site and then shoot some zombies. You know, how hard could it be? Well, you see, apparently quite, as I had the Chacom for the killing part. Good gun, don't get me wrong, but you've burned through this thing's ammo in about 7 seconds and well, it wasn't looking good for me. But with the final magazine, all of the zombies bunched together, I started blasting and just about managed to get the right amount of kills and now I had an upgraded fire staff. Now, I may have had an upgraded fire staff, 
but I wasn't done there. I still wanted to get at least the ice staff crafted and upgraded, so that's where I begin doing. It's round 15 and I've just grabbed the ice stone and shortly afterwards the staff was mine. I head into the crazy place at the end of round 16 where of course my last zombie dies, so it's now the beginning of round 17 when I'm trying to complete the ice staff's puzzle. Which by the way, much harder to do when there's a full round of zombies trying to kill you. Which annoyingly is exactly what they do. At this point I'm on the final tile of the puzzle and I'm running low on ice staff ammo, so I'm rushing through it. Because I hadn't been trading my horde of zombies very well, they all split and trapped me as I was finishing up the puzzle and I take it down. Very frustrating, but once I revived, the puzzle was completed. The real annoyance comes when I leave the crazy place and I blast two zombies so they're frozen, but yet they still manage to move as fast as possible and they both hit me, ending my run in an instant and I was pissed. Uh, but that's the end of Black Ops 2. It's just, it's done for. So... Black Ops 3 it is. Uh, there may be a slight possibility that I kind of cheated with Black Ops 3 as I played a custom map. But that custom map was the Call of the Dead remaster. So, you know, like I said, kind of cheated. This run actually started off in the single greatest way it could with my very first hit of the box spitting out the ray gun. But it gets even better. Once round four comes to an end, I hit the box again and it only goes and gives me the scavenger. Literally the first two spins of the box give me exactly what I wanted. Although uh, I think that might be all of my luck used for the rest of the year, so it's only down from here, people. With both of the wonder weapons now mine, I immediately turned my attention to whittling down George's health for the those extra perks. However, I still need to buy the rest of my actual perks, so on round 7, I went and picked up Jug, with PhD and Speed Caller following up shortly later. I then spent a few rounds just going through the rounds and grinding together points uh, for when I needed to pack a bunch of my guns, while still making sure I was getting George's health down as much as possible. End of round 13, and I finally have my first free perk. The two I most wanted were Double Tap and Stamina Up. Uh, I don't actually know if Double Tap works with these two guns, but we all know I love Stamina Up no matter what. Um, but I get dead shot. Perfect. Like I said, all that luck, gone. <laughs> I then spent the next few rounds doing uh, what I'd just been doing, killing zombies. Which, when you have one of the most powerful wonder weapons ever created in the scavenger, uh, it makes it quite easy. Also, the added benefit of PhD so I can blow myself up. Round 16, I decided to go and get both of my wonder weapons pack-a-punched. It's round 18 now. I have two fully juiced wonder weapons and things are looking great. George is also back, uh, but he's soon gone again because the sheer power of the scavenger just obliterates him. And my second free pack of the game is Mule Kick. Like I said, that look, gone. And of course, because I'm an idiot, I go and spin the box at the beginning of the next round. Now, I was just hoping for a decent bullet gun for if I were to run out of ammo, but instead I got dead. <laughs> Immediately, I get overrun, and as I'm trying to escape, I jump over these zombies on the stairs, but they grab a hold of my ankles, and before I know it, I'm on the ground. I recover and grab my perks, but this time, instead of going with Speed Cola, I opted for Stamina, you know, so I could just run away quicker next time. And it worked well enough, getting me into round 22, where everything fell apart. I shoot out a scavenger shot that kills a bunch of zombies, and enrages George but the zombies dropped a death machine which I grabbed and as I'm making my escape a zombie blocks me and I then get bonked by George's lightning stick and I'm in the dirt once again. Things only get worse from here on as George is still pissed. I shoot him a few times with the scavenger only to remember I don't have PhD anymore. So I leg it into the water where George traps me and uh, well it's game over. There is no escaping that attack in this situation. Around 22 defeat and Moon is still the victor at this point. It's now time for Blood of the Dead. I skipped over using the Blunder Gat in Black Ops 2, but I couldn't do it twice, so we're headed off to Alcatraz for this run. I spawned in with my Essex, uh, because I still haven't changed that yet, and got to work on feeding the Hellhounds. The first dog is fed and I spin the box just in hopes of getting lucky, but I end up with the Swordfish, which is a decent gun. A little later, it's round 7, power is on, I've got all the parts for the shield and just one final dog to feed, and things are looking pretty good for me. Next round, the last dog is fed and now I need 
need to go throw an axe at some skulls. And lo and behold, round 11, the Blundergat is mine. Round 13, and I'm gathering my souls for Pack-a-Punch and Brutus spawns. Now, me and Brutus have a little history with this gun, considering I killed him 1,000 times with it, and it doesn't just take him out on round 13, it one-taps him right in that stupid face, and oh boy, it feels great using this thing again. I always get asked as to why this gun is my favorite wonder weapon, and it's not because it's the best, you know, it's actually quite the opposite. It's nowhere near being the best, to be honest, but everything about it, mainly the design, is just incredible. There's truly not another wonder weapon that looks anything like it, and the fact it's not just a one-trick pony. A lot of other wonder weapons just kind of do one thing, albeit they do it very well, but being able to have three different versions of the Blundergat throughout a single game of zombies is insane to me. Anyway, enough gushing over this thing as it's time to get it pack-a-punched where we get the sweeper, which is obviously just going to walk through anything and everything. To be honest, the rest of this game, uh, not much happens. I head back to the starting area and basically just proceed to run around in a big loop for the next hour or so. Even though I had the Blundergat and it would do me good for the next 30 or more rounds, there was one other gun that I wanted. This gun isn't an official wonder weapon, uh, but it might as well be considering it's the most powerful gun in the game and I'm sure you all know what I'm talking about, and it's the Hellion Salvo, which I picked up on round 19. It does almost get me killed, however, as I spin the box right at the beginning of the round as a Brutus spawns, where I then get crowded by every zombie known to man, but Winter's Whale and my special weapon save me. And I wasn't lying when I said it, but the rest of this game is literally just me running around in a large circle, just killing everything that moves, and I do this very comfortably all the way up to round 30. I don't just beat our moon record, I go sprinting past it and just don't stop. That is, until the Blundergat takes its foot off the gas. Unfortunately, the Blundergat is not as spry as what it is at the lower rounds, and it does begin to struggle slightly once the round 30 threshold is passed. It's still very capable of killing enemies, don't get me wrong, but if I was to get trapped whilst using it, uh, I'm dead. <laughs> yes, I could have used the Hellion in that situation, and that would definitely save me, uh, but there is one glaring issue there. I I'm not running PhD, and the Hellion itself will be what kills me if I was to do that. So, as I go higher and higher throughout the rounds, I'm slowly backing myself into an inescapable corner, and that corner arrives on round 38. The Blundergat is now struggling badly, and I'm almost fully relying on the Hellion. I make a few silly mistakes and allow zombies to get too close, and I inevitably take myself down. No worries, you know, we make the revive and close out the round. Round 39, I'm now two perks down, and there's no way in hell I am going into the prison to get those perks back. Annoyingly, one of the perks I lost was Winter's Whale, which, I won't lie, <laughs> was saving my ass a lot, which I begin to realize as I'm running through the new industries and every zombie just spawns in front of me, each taking a swing and I end up taking a second down, which unfortunately is closely followed up with my demise. The Blundergat needs reloading, which takes quite a while without speed, so I switch to the Hellion to clear out the zombies behind me. What I wasn't accounting for, however, was the dog that spawned atop the staircase, which trapped me and killed me. If I shoot him with the Hellion, I am as good as dead anyway. I tried to reload the Blundergat gap but I just don't have the time and our run comes to an end on round 39 which is pretty respectable for blood but now it's time for the final showdown. Forsaken is home to arguably one of the greatest wonder weapons we have ever seen in Call of Duty Zombies and that is the Chrysalax. This axe gun hybrid is immense and capable of carrying honestly anybody to the easiest round 50 of your life. We start off with our shovel as we do need a melee weapon for a later in the easter egg step to get the axe. Uh, I may have got a little carried away uh, in the starting area by not leaving until round 9 when I had a little over 23,000 points. So, uh, Whoops. <laughs> it didn't take me long to move through the map, and before I know it, I'm taking on the Abomination before heading into the Observation Tower. Once we're there, all I need to do is press a button to begin the main Easter egg, and now I can get to work on acquiring the Chrysalax. It's been a minute since I've done this Easter egg, and I forgot what crystals I needed for the Ether Tank, and I begin destroying one of the big purple crystals, which was obviously very wrong, and I made my life very miserable for the next five minutes, where I ended up taking two downs. A few rounds after taking those 
lockdowns, I have my first two crystals for the axe. Now all I needed was an abomination to get the last. Uh, that didn't spawn until round 17. Now that may have been my fault for staying in the staging area for so long, but Jesus Christ. Anyway, round 17 and I get my hands on the crystal axe and it's time to go to town. I don't just breeze through the rounds, I am flying through them. And before I know it, I'm closing in on round 30 and I haven't really done much other than buy my perks pack a punch and press left click on my mouse. This weapon really is just free rounds. Even when it's looking like I may be in trouble, the axe just does its thing and kills everything. There's no quirky gimmicks with this thing, it just annihilates everything that moves. Crystal Axe is so powerful it will actually one hit enemies all the way up to round 44 where it becomes a two hit. And, and that's it, that, that's as bad as it gets, which is nowhere near bad. Sure, it isn't an infinite damage weapon, but it's pretty damn strong. In fact, it carries me all the way to up to round 50, which is where I end up taking my third down of the game and what is my first whilst using this weapon. Unfortunately, upon reviving, I get overrun by zombies and the Crystal X just doesn't have it in anymore to save me whilst I'm stood still. And before I know it, it's game over. Thus proving that the Blundergat and the Crystal X are clearly the best wonder weapons of all time. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching and as always, I'll see you guys in the next one.